Hi everybody, uh, Randy Richard here in the shop. So today I'm going to make a Christmas present for my daughter. It's going to be a woodworking project. I know this is a deviation from the norm, but I still do enjoy woodworking. So I have a highly technical drawing here. Quality kit, can't make that out. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be a quilt rack. Should go uh, pretty quick. Uh, we're gonna make it out of uh, some uh, maple I got left from uh, another project, but plenty of it here uh, to do it. So I'm gonna make a video of it, obviously, and uh, we'll do a little woodworking. I'll try probably uh, time lapse kind of some of it here because woodworking's a little bit slower than the metalworking. <laughs> so. Uh, so we'll kind of make this video go along. Okay, thank you. Uh, is a 10 inch uh, Delta Unisaw. Uh, I've had it for 25 years, more than that. Since I've had it since uh, like 86, I think. So it's a pretty old saw, but it's really good. I also have a Delta Unifence, uh, the saw guide here. Uh, I really like, actually I really like it. It's uh, Really well. I mean, the, the saw the saw is a three horsepower saw, 220 volt. Uh, the fence is really slick. You know, it has a, a scale here, and you can calibrate it with the little plate over here. Uh, so it's really very accurate, and it clamps up solid and uh, square every time. So I really like it. It makes it cut you know, cut things pretty quick and easy. Uh, I just use the, the tape measure scale over here all the time. So, let's get going here. We're going to uh, uh, change things here. But what I do use is, are these. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of these right now. But anyway, these help hold your work against your fence. And they only rotate in one direction. Uh, and that's forward here. See how they lock? And they're clutched. Right? This, these prevent kickbacks. I love these things. These things are great. Now you can get ones that also roll in both directions if you just want to hold it. But for preventing kickback and stuff, uh, these are just great. I've never had a piece uh, kick back uh, when I'm using one of these things. I have had a couple pieces that kick back before, so uh, these have really uh, saved the day on that. So you just uh, take the board, um, the little screw here, you, you crank it down so they're touching, uh, and uh, they're spring loaded and they hold against there. Pretty quick and easy. So, I, yeah, I do, I love those. I have a big believer in push sticks. I always use push sticks. Yeah, they're chewed up. Yeah, because they might run close to the blade. Uh, use push sticks better than your fingers. So, uh, that's why I don't ever get hurt. So I had the wrong blade in there, but that, I mean that worked for the short piece. It was fine. Uh, yeah, I put my rip blade uh, back in. Also, uh, the other thing I really believe in is having uh, your insert around your blade there. It should fit as tight as you could possibly get away with. Uh, these are, uh, you know, plastic or uh, they're kind of a fiberish plastic material. You buy them in the blank, and you fit them in there, and then you raise the blade up through to cut the slot. They're pretty slick. They really work well. Uh, I've got a couple of these, uh, but having that tight fit, you'll get better cuts, uh, less chipping. They work way better. You won't get something jammed down in there. Uh, far superior setup. You can make them out of wood. I've got one I use with my data blade, and I, I just made that one out of wood. But that tight fit uh, really helps.
All right, we're gonna do a little, little cross cutting now. For my cross cuts, uh, I'm just gonna use my uh, compound miter saw. This is a real old Makita. Uh, it works. It's not the most accurate miter saw out there today. Today standards, the ones are a lot nicer, but yeah, this one works pretty good. And I can get it to cut nice and square. It's worked pretty good for a long time. Uh, pitch on it. Anyway, so I marked this one off already. Uh, here's that square. Uh, I'll show you a little bit better view of that. Like I said, Britsy tool works. Has a little flip-flop fig there. I'll show you that. Uh, it's adjustable. Has a set screws here to adjust the angle to get it perfect. Very nice. Like I said, I have uh, quite a few of these. Uh, their tools, I should say, in their cabinets. In the cabinet there. Yeah, so that goes on there. And it can, it'll sit on the edge of a board instead of fall down. You know, put that out. Has a little screw on the side. And uh, works pretty slick. Very accurate tools. Uh, very nice. So, we'll cut this here to uh, a radius. These are the ends. Uh, we'll do that on the bandsaw. And uh, we'll just keep going. We're over here at the bandsaw. This is up. Inca 20 inch bandsaw, uh, 20 inches, yeah, 20 inch bandsaw, three wheel bandsaw. So there's three wheels instead of two. So it gives you a nice big deep throat. It's a woodworking bandsaw. It's aluminum, uh, made in Switzerland. They're very nice equipment. I also have their tables, uh, a 10 inch cabinet saw, an uh, Inca one, and a joiner. Uh, very nice equipment. Had these, I've, gosh, these here I've had for, uh, Shoot, close to, but probably really close to 30 years. Uh, I've had them a long time. I made lots and lots of stuff. Uh, I, I made a nice little aluminum uh, plate here for it, so it's a lot closer fitting. The plastic one was one that kind of slid around. Anyway, it has a one and a half horse. I put a one and a half horse, one and a half horse motor on it. So anyway, it's got a. radius on there. So this is my POS uh, valve sander. One day, hopefully, 
this can go away. But this is what I have. gonna do a little corner round on them and I think this is a quarter inch or a 3 16th inch radius uh, quarter round bit and it's a uh, little router with a bearing and so I'm just gonna quarter round these edges and we're gonna make some noise and some chips okay we're gonna radius uh, the two edges, uh, you know, well, one edge per piece that's rounded in here. So I got it clamped in here on the dogs. We'll do a little bit and then we'll turn it and then we'll finish it up and then we'll do the other one. This is the little flipper locker piece uh, for the quilts and we're going to do this corner and that corner also. Uh, just the, the rounding the corner. So this is roughly what it's going to look like, like that, like that. This here is the locking piece. You can see the end of it. That'll go in there, and that will uh, rotate on a couple dowels, and like that. And you'll slip the quilt up there, and then this will just rock down. It locks it in. So you got a hanging quilt.
I need a little shelf to put things on, stuff on. So there you go. That's what it's going to look like. All right, so now we're going to I'm gonna do a, a bunch of sanding, I think, and uh, get everything fitted just right. Then we'll be uh, getting this all, getting all this part uh, kind of glued up and uh, fastened together. This part B, uh, really noisy. This is a, this is a Porter Cable Random Orbit Sander. Uh, 120 grit paper. I use a vacuum on it. I have my shop vac hooked up to it here with the custom adapter piece. Uh, but anyway, that really helps with the dust. It gets sucked up through the holes here. There's virtually almost no dust when you do it this way. So uh, we're going to sand it. This is really noisy part. Okay, that noisy part is done. Uh, we're all sanded. Ready to go. Uh, we're, uh, we need to resize. We need to size this a little bit on the wet just so it matches uh, real nice with these end pieces. But uh, that's about it. Uh, we'll just run down on the planer or the, I should say the joiner uh, in a little bit. So let's get things matched up so we can put some holes and. Uh, Get things gluing together. So I just have this clamped in here, not glued yet. Uh, we're going to, I got this marked on the end. We're going to drill the dowel holes, 3 inch dowel, uh, where, so for our pivot. That's for the pivot. So we can sew in the hair pivot. So we can mark that and uh, get these drilled before we put it together. So. Not very technical and probably not very accurate, but we're just going to hold it up there tight and pretty simple to do though. These are a Brad point drill, you know, really nice for woodworking. Okay. Go over the bandsaw, I'll cut a couple dowels. So what I've done is I've stuck uh, center in there, these dowel blind hole with a little center tip. Stuffed one in one end. I've marked it up here where I want it to hit on the wood. Uh, I just chose an inch and three quarters. It looks good. So I can hold this straight. I can't do both ends at once, so I can do one end. So I'll hold it against this end at the mark. I'm going to hold it this end at the mark with a slight angle, just just a few degrees. Uh, that way, so when it's in there, if there's nothing in there, the thing doesn't flop down. The, you know, this here, this is going to pivot, so it doesn't just fall down like that. This way, it does hit against the wood. But just a few degrees. I mean, I just eye in this. Now, I'm going to get this in position there so it's flush on the top. And then I'm just going to squeeze the vise on it. 
and it put a dimple in the wood here in the end piece. There we go, little dimple right there. Now I'm going to measure that and I'm going to mark it on, the, on that one the same. This is another uh, Bridge City Tool Works combo square. They're really nice. It has my initials engraved in them. Um, has a numbered. That's not a serial number. That's yeah. That, that's like a serial number, yeah. So anyway, so we're gonna uh, so from the top, we'll start at the top. back there we go and we're going to drill this we're not going to drill all the way through this is uh, oh, 13 16th right now so we're going to drill half an inch or so in there just a blind hole And you gotta remember, it's got a brad point, so we, if we go a half inch on the flat, uh, that brad point then makes it about five eighths. So that's uh, plenty of room for us. Check how that's going to be. That's the top. And that looks just right. Chips build up in there, so sometimes you don't get your full depth. So, yeah, there we go. Clean them out there. Okay, that should go there. That one should go there. Try to get that out. My dowels may be a little on the long side, but we can fix that. But no, that'll be just that'll be just right. Looks like no, a little bit long. Anyway, that's going to be just fine. Right there. And uh, we need to trim our dowels a little bit. 